Oh. A new habit I've been really holding myself accountable for is going out for afternoon walks. I found it to be a really nice way to get some exercise in and to just be outside soaking up the sun and whatever else the world has to offer each day. Ah, <sighs> the world is wonderful. The sun is shining. The birds are singing. <laughs> no! Oh my god! Yeah. Sometimes things like that happen too. One time I even saw a snake on the sidewalk. Like imagine if I wasn't looking where I was going. No, 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 no. Not today. Allow me to set the scene. There had been rain for many days in a row and I was itching to get another walk in ASAP. I looked outside and saw that it was only overcast, so I jumped on the opportunity to go take a stroll. I changed my clothes, stepped out the door and I was ready to go. Until I was greeted with this. Ah! This bird is a masked lapwing, better known as the Australian lover. And believe me when I say, they are savage. savage. They get really protective over their nests and therefore hate every living organism around them. Can you imagine walking out the front door to get assaulted by not one, but two of these birds? And not to mention, they have spikes in their wings. Spikes? That's gotta be the most stereotypically Australian thing I've ever heard. To be honest, what I do like about them is how they look as babies. Just look at how fluffy they are. And their obnoxious long legs. Well, I guess I'll be driving then. I kept glancing up at the grey sky looming over me. Please don't rain. I prayed. I prayed. 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 I'm sure you've all heard about today's sponsor, the amazing and increasingly popular mobile game that is Raid Shadow Legends, a game that brings you a console level experience all on your phone. Take on raid bosses, dungeon runs, campaign battles and PvP arena matches using your own combination of the over 600 champions in game. With hundreds of artifacts to equip, you can develop your team's tactics and become an unstoppable force. Out of them all, I'd say my favourite champion to use is Calvalax, who uses poison as his main attack and can affect everyone simply by walking into the room. Kyoko is a close second though. She's a powerful defender with the whole team in mind. She can place a 50% ally protection on her allies for 2 turns and place a block damage on herself for 3 turns, then give herself an extra turn with a 4 turn cooldown. What a girl boss. And it's not like I even have to tell you guys, but look at these graphics. It's super satisfying to play. There's actually a ton happening in Raid this month. They are bringing out five new champions that I can't wait to get my greasy little mitts on. <laughs> They're overhauling the champion vault and they've got a load of awesome smaller updates on the way as well. On top of that, Raid's running a huge series of summer splash events for the whole month where you can get incredible skins for everyone's favorite dwarf, Trunda. Woohoo! Oh yeah, and one more thing. Ultimate Death Knight, coming August 2022. Make sure you get in now if you want to be a part of it. There's never been a better time to start playing Raid, so if you're up for a new adventure, click the top link in my description or scan the QR code here on the screen and you'll get bonuses worth $30. We're talking a free epic champion, Tayrell, 200k silver, one energy refill and one XP boost, and one ancient shard so you can summon awesome champions as soon as you get in the game. All this treasure will be waiting for you here. Thanks to Raid for sponsoring this video. Even though it wasn't sunny out, I still grabbed a hat before I left and that's when I noticed a white cap I hadn't worn in a fair while and thought, yes, do it. No regrets, right? Hehe, <laughs> foreshadowing. I pulled into a car spot at a local park and began to, um, saunter around. <laughs>
A random dog approached me multiple times on this walk and every time it looked like it was going to stop near me for a pat, which I obviously wouldn't pass up the offer. And then the next day you hear I have ringworm. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> anyway, he bolted off every single time. This dog would find joy in pranking me. The goal was just to do one loop of the park and then drive home. Easy, right? I thought so too. The same dog greeted me again and darted off. Really no surprise there. But this time I saw a lady in the distance. Do you remember how I said it had been raining for the past few days? Well, this lady made a pretty wise decision to park on the damp, thick, with three C's, muddy grass. Okay, so you're telling me that the perfectly fine road that everyone else was parked on wasn't good enough, huh? Clap, clap, well done. This woman was walking towards me and because this dog was hanging around her, I just assumed it was hers. So I say, Aw, your dog is so cute. Kinda ugs, to be honest. She completely disregarded what I said, so wasn't too sure if she's actually the owner. Peace out! <coughs> and just like that, he was never to be seen again. The woman suddenly jump scares me, asking if I am able to help her because her car was clearly stuck in the sludgy grass. Her brilliant idea was to get a victim, aka me, to help unbog it. So Evelyn was like, Oh yeah, her name is Evelyn now. She said something along the lines of, Oh, you're the only one here. Reckon you could help me? I just bought this car yesterday, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, okay. I'm definitely not the strongest person, but I could give it a go. In other words, it felt like I had no option other than to help her. It was obviously the nicest thing to do in the situation, <coughs> but I wish I could be like that dog and peace out. <coughs> but alas, I am human and I can't get away with these types of things. All right, I'll get you to stand on this grass patch so you're not in the mud and you can push with the side of your body when I accelerate. Okay, got it? Hey, I think it's working. Ha <laughs> ha, if only I knew. You see, the grassy spot I was standing on was kind of, uh, slowly disappearing. Yes, we managed to move the car, but only into a bigger mud pile. When all four wheels were in the mud and being accelerated to the max, just take a look for yourself. How are we doing? Ah! That's right, hailstone pieces of mud were being sprayed everywhere. It was all over me by this point, but I didn't want to give up just yet. Imagine not being able to unbog a car. OMG, how embarrassing. <laughs> Unfortunately, that was my thought process at the time. Look, I'm sorry, I tried my hardest. Evelyn must have had some high expectations for a no muscle wet noodle looking girl. Like, come on, do I look buff? Huh, Evelyn? The moment I decided enough was enough was when the ground was literally half swallowing my shoes. Like, come on, there wasn't any traction left. No balance whatsoever. I had to accept defeat. I nearly fell butt first into this mud just trying to get out. If I did, that goop would have swallowed me up, no question about it. I saw the mud was splattered all over the roof and the sides of Evelyn's car. It was to the point that you could barely see the original color left. Icky. Heh, <laughs> says me. I walked around the car keeping my distance to see how things were going. It was actually looking kinda hopeful. Until... Oh damn, the car is still moving. That's good. Thank god I'm nowhere near the mud now. I kid you not, Evelyn made direct eye contact with me, turned the steering wheel abruptly, and mud sprayed me again! Look, she probably didn't mean to because she was too focused on her Titanic car. You know, just Evelyn things. I really do be trying to get out of the firing zone, but turns out I am the firing zone. Oh my God, look at the smoke coming from the wheels. Huh? You need to stop accelerating. What? Evelyn? She legit gets out of the car and be like, oh, why is it smoky? Why do you think? Is what I wish I said, but in reality was, just let it rest for a minute. That's right, I am very knowledgeable about cars. Oh, we didn't really get far. AKA you sucked. I just got this car yesterday. Ah, uh, I don't want to blow it up. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. Ah, uh -huh, yeah. Sorry I couldn't help out more. And that was it. 
I think we both knew that it wasn't going to work out. So we had to part ways. Oh my god, it sounds like we're in a romantic drama or something. She basically just let me go like, eh, well that didn't work. Bye! She didn't even thank me, let alone apologize about annihilating me with all this mess. I told her the only person I saw in the park was a man on the other side, and just by the look of him, he could probably move the car a lot better than me. My weasel arms could not compete. <laughs> now this was the last thing I was expecting to happen on a quick walk. Okay, this is a bit random, but here comes a plot twist. After a while, I realized I may have actually met this lady before this whole incident happened. Coincidentally, it was on a rainyish day as well. The interaction occurred just like this. The worms! The worms are coming out of the ground because it's moist! The moral of the story is that I'm weak. Wait, no, no! The moral is that you can't always solve everyone's problems. Yeah, sure. I wish I could have done more for her, but at the end of the day, it was her mistake to park there, and I am clearly not cut out for the task. And before anyone says anything, I did walk around the same park the next day, and Evelyn's car was nowhere to be found. So who knows what actually happened? Maybe the buff guy did actually come to the rescue, or maybe little old Evelyn kept accelerating into the night and slowly sank beneath the surface.